Hey everyone, it's Mark. This is my recap for Pokemon Journeys episode 118, Ash Heads into Battle versus Steven. This was the 1203rd episode of the Pokemon anime, and we finally got to see Ash's first battle in the Masters Tournament. This was a very highly anticipated episode, so let's talk about what happened. So after the usual opening that we have been getting for every Masters Tournament episode so far, it's time for the showdown between the Hoenn Champion and Alola's Champion. Well, Bam Z are fired up, although Jesse isn't very optimistic about Ash's chances. Elsewhere in the stands, Iris comes to sit with Go and Hop, and once again, Hop is blown away by one of the champions, while meanwhile, Iris is blown away by how cute and fluffy Wooloo is. As the referee is going over the rules again, they highlight how Ash can use all three battle gimmicks, and there's no question that one of the keys to this battle is going to be which one of them Ash uses. It's finally time to get things started, as Ash leads off with Dracovish while Steven chooses Metagross. Very interesting that Steven has been the only competitor to lead off with their ace Pokemon so far. I mean, unless we're counting Lance's Dragonite, but anyways, Lance is still nowhere to be seen, but the other champions are excited to watch Ash's battle. Steven starts off by having Metagross dodge attacks with agility before launching a psychic attack. Ash counters with Ficious Rend, which lands first, thus landing passive damage on Metagross, who is eventually able to repel Dracovish with psychic. In case it wasn't clear to anyone watching, Ash his friends in the stands point out how Fishy's Rend is super powerful if it lands first, and even more powerful thanks to Dracovish's strong jaw ability. Ash gives credit to Paul as he used the same tactic in their battle together, leading with agility and then going into psychic, so that's how Ash was able to get off to such a fast start. Knowing that things have started really badly, Steven elects to switch out Metagross for Aggron, so he's trading speed for sheer power and defense. With this being the first break in the action, it's the perfect time for today's parade of cameos, and I was absolutely dying when I saw some of the randoms that appeared in Steven's Owen shout out. Like what in the world are some of these people doing in the same building together watching this battle? Why are so many random characters of the day from all over the Hoenn region just here alongside notable characters like Drew, Professor Birch, Tyson, and my favorite of the bunch, Harley. Anyway, Steven talks about how winning this tournament will make him the best in the world, blah blah blah. Let's get to Ash talking about all the people who have cheered him on up to this point, that being the people back at the Cerise Lab. And at Oaks Lab too, we finally get a physical appearance of Tracy, I've been waiting so long. Anyways, let's get back to the battle for now as both trainers call for a head-on collision with Dracovish's Dragon Rush meeting Agron's Heavy Slam. It's safe to say that Agron got the better of this exchange and this is enough to knock Dracovish out. Jesse isn't surprised to see Ash struggling, but she is uh, going through a lot of emotions at the minute. Ash thanks Dracovish for its hard work. It did take some powerful hits from Steven's Pokemon, but also landed a lot of damage as well. Ash sends Gengar out next and goes straight for Will-O-Wisp, which Agron is unable to avoid. I mean, it's not exactly agile, is it? Ash's fire types are, well, fired up to see Gengar pull off that move, but Steven pushes through and lands a smart strike, although its power is diminished thanks to the burn. In addition, the burn keeps chipping away at Agron's health. Steven goes for Rock Tomb next, but Ash counters with Dazzling Gleam. Huge blast of light, and after taking damage from the Dazzling Gleam and its burn, Agron goes down. Steven's third Pokemon is Cradilly, which doesn't scare Gengar, but maybe it should because Cradilly's power up is too much even for Gengar to dodge, and Gengar is in a bad way. Steven doubles down and uses Ingrain, which means that Cradilly can no longer switch out, but Ingrain will restore its health as the battle goes on. Ash tries to break free by using Sludge Bomb. This fails, but it does confirm that Gengar forgot Ice Punch when it learned Will O Wisp, so that's notable. Steven calls for a Meteor Beam and and while that's charging, Ash has time to think of a counter, and he decides to have Dazzling Gleam meet Steven's attack head on, and the resulting collision is enough to allow Gengar to break free from Cradilly's power whip. You'd think this would be a turning point for Ash, but when Gengar goes for a Shadow Ball, it's easily tossed aside by Cradilly, who launches another barrage of overwhelming power whips, and this is finally enough to knock Gengar out. Ash is down to his last Pokemon, and he sends Pikachu into the fray. A lot of respect is shown to Pikachu here, as the announcer calls him the Flaming Bolt of Lightning, and Steven acknowledges him as Ash's greatest partner. Jesse has finally come around, fully cheering for Ash and Pikachu by this point. Ash lands a hit with Quick Attack before Steven can launch his next attack, which ends up being Rock Blast. This turns out to be a terrible decision, as Pikachu just uses the stones to his advantage by jumping off of them in order to gain ground on Cradilly. Steven goes for Power Whip this time, but Ash has this move worked out as well, calling for Electro Web, which actually traps all of Cradilly's vines, leaving it completely vulnerable. This strategy even awes the other champions watching on, and Ash wastes no time closing the deal with an Iron Tail straight to the face, which is finally 
enough to knock Cray Dilly out. Steven is impressed with Ash's tactics, and now it's come down to Metagross versus Pikachu, with Pikachu easily being the fresher of the two after all the damage that Dracovich landed on Metagross at the beginning of the battle. Steven isn't messing around, going straight for his Keystone, and I don't know, maybe I'm just feeling a little bit of Mega Evolution fatigue now. This is the fourth episode in a row where someone Mega Evolved their Ace Pokemon. It's still cool, just a little repetitive. Ash tries to land a hit with Thunderbolt, but Metagross is easily able to avoid them. It's so fast now that it's Mega Evolved, and it eventually closes in for a point-blank Meteor Mash. But Pikachu is able to hang on. For some reason, Ash thinks an Iron Tail will actually do something, but Metagross just dodges again before sending Pikachu crashing into the ground with Psychic. Pikachu is still in this fight, but it's not looking good. Ash is rattled by this, but he keeps his cool because he knows exactly what to do. Pikachu is on the same page, hits Z-Move time. Steven is intrigued, Cynthia is amazed by what she's witnessing, and I played a little bit of this at the start. A rendition of the very first Japanese opening theme starts to play during the scene, not what I was expecting, but I thought it was perfect. After charging up their Z-Power, Pikachu sends the colorful electric beams towards Metagross, and all Steven can do at this point is hope that Metagross is able to dodge this one too, and it works at first. It manages to get behind Pikachu when Steven calls for Flash Cannon, but this is met by one of Pikachu's beams, which allows some others to make contact. This lands some massive damage to Metagross. It may not have been the full shebang, but it was still a lot, and even though Metagross becomes the first Pokemon to survive a 10 million volt Thunderbolt, Ash follows up with Iron Tail immediately, and I love the visual of Pikachu doing this while still wearing Ash's hat. As you can expect, this was the finishing blow. Metagross is declared unable to battle, and Ash's greatest partner has pulled through once again. Pikachu is the last Pokemon standing, giving Ash the victory over Steven Stone. This brings an end to the first round, with Ash booking his spot in the semifinals against Cynthia. Sinnoh's champion is excited to hear this, while well, meanwhile it's party time up in the stands. Team Rocket are fired up at the massive upset they just witnessed, and now we go back to Ash and Steven on the battlefield. Steven doesn't say anything too notable, I mean in most of these interactions the champions just recite some iteration of their game dialogue, so nothing new here. Cut to later that day, and there's a little meetup going on outside of Winden Stadium, not sure how these guys aren't getting mobbed by a sea of fans, but alright. This scene gives off the impression that all the losers are leaving the tournament and not coming back, which is disappointing, but it was cool to see these three all together supporting Ash. Back inside the stadium, Leon is overlooking the battlefield, and you can still see the spot where Ash's Z-move sent Metagross crashing into the ground. The episode comes to an end with the first round of the Masters tournament in the books, but the semifinals are coming soon. Another amazing episode and another great battle. I'm really liking this clash of champions so far. Ash vs. Steven may not have been the matchup that everyone wanted to see, but that doesn't mean it wasn't a dream match that I've wanted to see for so long. Think back to AG when Steven was first mentioned. Steven happens to be a very skillful Pokemon trainer. No kidding! Maybe I'll battle him someday. I'm sure you two will meet up at some point in your journeys. Yep. 19 years ago when that episode debuted in Japan, I don't think anyone could have imagined that Ash and Steven would one day have the battle we just saw. These two might not have had the strongest narrative or story going into their match, but this was just the first round. It was a great introduction to Ash's Masters Tournament battles. All six Pokemon in the battle played their part. It is a little funny to think that Metagross was Steven's only Pokemon to not get a KO, but I think a lot of people are sleeping on the amount of damage that was exchanged in that first collision between Fischius, Rend, and Psychic. Even if Dracovish ended up having the smallest role in this battle, it did still land a crucial blow to Metagross, which helped Ash win in the end. I thought Steven's strategy was decent, he knew how to use his real powerhouse Pokemon well, although he did not have a counter for Will-O-Wisp, I'm actually surprised that Ash didn't just use it again on Cradilly after seeing how effective it was against Aggron. I thought Gengar put up a good fight against Cradilly, but what was especially impressive to me was how even though Gengar was defeated here, Ash used that battle to learn exactly what he needed to do in order to counter Cradilly's approach. The key was Cradilly's vine and its power whip, and Ash was able to neutralize that with Electro Web. Really, Ash and Pikachu were on another level in this battle. They were totally in sync and able to succeed in basically everything they did. Speed, strategy, resilience, and in the end, power led them to a triumphant victory. I thought the Z-Move scene was just phenomenal. The song that played just added to the moment in the best way, and it was so cool seeing Ash and Pikachu's strongest move be enough to overcome Mega Metagross. Like, Ash had no shot of winning if this didn't work. I'm totally fine with that, by the way like Ash is the underdog here, and he needed to Hail Mary to defeat Steven. I thought the way they set up at the beginning, how whichever one of Ash's gimmicks he would use was going to be pivotal to the outcome of this match really set things up perfectly. Ash was never going to dominate the champion of Hoenn, but he was able to hang in there with Steven before Ash and Pikachu's bond was able to get them across the line and into the semifinals. I can't wait for Ash versus Cynthia, by the way, it's so wild that match is even happening. Overall, I do think I preferred Iris versus Cynthia, I think that was the best battle of the first round, but I'd be 
curious to hear what match has been your favorite down in the comments. Aside from the battle itself, this episode had plenty of fun, smaller moments too. I especially liked how Ash was able to draw on his experience training with Paul at Oak's lab, and Iris was a fun addition to go and Hop's watch party in the stands. The cameos near the start were interesting too. Honestly, I can't help but laugh every time I think about how all of these random characters just so happen to be in the same Hoenn Pokemon Center. There was no May or Max sighting, but just like how Silent wasn't in the last episode, I think this is because they are saving all of Ash's companions for his battle against Leon. With that said, if Max was watching this battle, this is probably what he would have to say. Ash is so awesome! Because of all these positive things I'm saying about this episode, it shouldn't come as too much of a surprise that I'm giving this episode a 9.5 out of 10 rating. That's back to back 9.5s, and honestly, this episode was close to getting a 10 out of 10 from me. The ending was probably the only thing I wasn't totally behind, like there was no real reason given for why these three had to leave, and we still have no word on why Lance hasn't been seen since his loss, but whatever, it's time to move on to the semifinals. Well, actually, it's not, and the show did a terrible job at explaining this to viewers, like, like, why is the next episode not going to be Leon versus Diantha? We got no explanation for this. Journeys is gonna journeys, I guess, and the preview for the next episode was hosted by Krissa and Mimi. Uh, all right. There weren't even any new clips shown in this preview, so is the next episode even going to be anything new, or is it just gonna be a Chloe and Evie recap? We definitely do not need a Chloe and Evie recap. I would be fine if this episode was going to be focused on Chloe and Evie, but we do not need a recap episode. That would just be a waste of time. I can tell you what isn't a waste of time, and that would be watching Starmeister and Luop's Pokemon Chronicles review series. Yeah, Luop was messaging me and a lot of other YouTubers recently asking for people to promote the end of the Chronicles review series, and so here I am doing a solid for my friend. I'll even include a link to it in the end screen at the end of this video. Speaking of which, I have nothing else to say right now. I mean, I'm happy to continue discussing this episode over on my Discord server if you'd like to join me and all my friends over there. Thank you all so much for watching this video. Be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys next time.